Awesome. Okay, 2 Timothy 1, focusing on verses 11 and 12. We're going to be talking about how God, who is the creator of heaven and earth, and we've been talking about who also has a plan for our life and our eternity and what is going to happen to us here. That's why we're titled Your Destiny. What is your destiny? What does that mean to you? Everything we talked about last week, talking about what God how he instrumented death and what he is going to be doing with death later on, how that applies to us individually. So let's read through our scriptures here, starting in chapter, or excuse me, in verse 8. It says, Paul says, Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles, for this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded he is able to keep, to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Amen. Yeah, praise the Lord. God, thank you so much for your word, and thank you that you have strengthened a man like Paul to live a life for you and be an example to us. Man, in the deepest, darkest moments a person can endure, Paul had faith, and he had promise, and he had hope in what he believed in. And that, that is the great gift that you have given to us, that no matter what happens to us here, we have hope in you. No matter how bad it gets, we have hope in you. Lord, we know that you will take care of us and we put our hope and our trust in you. So God, would this time just be about you? Would you and your spirit come upon us, God? Would you touch our hearts? Would you draw us closer to you? And would it be nothing of us, Lord, but all of you? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we've been discussing this great plan that God has for us. And how he has ordained that plan from even before time began. From even before he created this universe, he had a plan for each one of us. And he's had a plan for each one of us and what we'll do here and for what we'll do for all of eternity. This isn't all we have. This isn't it right here. We have a whole eternity that God has prepared for us already before time began, that he is leading us toward through what we're going through here. What you go through here in this life is not just random. Oh, sweet. Time out. <laughs> Hi. Nice. There you go. You got your spot now. You're welcome. This is Darlene. If you guys don't know her, this is little Ray, mama Darlene. Ray, Raylene. Oh, Raylene. Sorry. Why am I having issues with names? This is Raylene. I'm sorry, yeah. sweetheart. So good to see you. Raylene. Yeah. Raylene. Awesome. Awesome. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Anyway, God has this plan for us before the foundation of the world. This is what he does. This is not just random stuff that's going on in our lives. You know, Paul says, when bad things happen to you, understand that God has a plan for that and thank God for it. Thank God for the bad things that happen to you. He says, for this is the will of God for your life. This is the will of God for your life. God is doing something special in you. He's working out a greater weight of glory than what you can see here. Because the things that happen to you here, that glory is going to follow you forever, for all eternity. It's not just about what's here. It's about what God has for you there. 
It's going to be so much greater than it is here. You're hurting today. You're sad today. You're having a rough time. Look, this is as bad as it gets for you. Thank God that this is as bad as it gets for you. God has so many greater things for us. He's going to do it too. He has a great purpose and plan for us. And that purpose and plan will come to fruition. God has never broken a promise. Anybody ever read that big book of his? Seen all the promises he made to us? Anybody ever seen one he hasn't kept? No, when he says something is going to happen, it happens. That's why we have hope in him. Because he can say something is going to happen, even hundreds or thousands, millennia, before it actually happens. And then it comes to pass. And we're like, hmm, maybe you do know what you're talking about, God. Maybe you did have a plan for all this. Do you understand that our God is the God of life? He's the God of the living, not of the dead. That means that even after you die, you will still be alive because you have life in him. So why, why, do, we see, why do we as people seek these other people like psychics in mediums who are searching for the dead to give us advice on how to live our lives? You're alive. They're dead. If they had the answers to life, they would be alive. They're dead. How much greater to seek Jesus, who was alive and was dead, and yet is alive again? Do you not believe that he has the answer to life? Do you not believe that his life is the very thing that we should be emulating? What was he focused on? What was he living for? Are you living for the things that he was living for? Because he never had much money. He never had many possessions. Hardly, I mean, he had family. But you know what he said about his family? His family came to see him because they thought he was crazy. And he said, oh, they, they told him, oh, your mother and your brother and your sisters are outside. They want to talk to you. And he said, look around. Here are my mother, my brother, and my sisters. They're the ones doing the will of God. Fascinating, right? All these things that we put so much weight on in our own lives, Jesus never lived for them. Jesus never put any weight on them whatsoever. And yet we think they're the be-all, end-all. But yet, why do so many people gain the whole world, and yet they're still unhappy? Yet they still have no hope. Yet they even still commit suicide. This is the, one of the richest nations in the world. And yet we have one of the highest suicide rates in all the world. How could that be? If money and possessions and all those things are the greatest things ever, and that's what life is about. Why do people still have no hope? Because it ain't about that. It ain't about that at all. Jesus didn't have any of those things. And yet, he said over and over again, I'm just here to do the will of my Father. I'm just doing what God has for me. That's it. He wasn't concerned with the rest. The religious people, they were all up in arms about it. How could you say that? How could you say that all these things that God has told us to do don't need to be done? No, no, no. The things that God told you to do need to be done. But they need to be done with the right motivation. Not for you, but for him. 
when you go to work every day, when you serve your family, when you go out and buy things, all those things need to be done with God in mind. Why am I actually doing this? Why am I actually buying this thing? Is this so I can serve God better? Or is this so people like me? Is this so people want to be around me? Or is this so people think that I'm like all high and mighty and I'm successful? What is it for? You know that anything that for you is all going to burn in the end. It's going to burn. It'll be a pile of dust on the ground. Somebody will walk right over it. Here is the place where my Ferrari used to sit. (laughs) And now it's a pile of dust. A lot of good it does me. And yet we chase after these things. Look at what God says. We're going to skip all the way to the end because I just can't wait, okay? Just can't wait. Go to Matthew chapter 6 in verse 25. This is what God does for you. He cares about you in this way. And this is what he will do for you in your whole life. I love, I love what it says here. This is so amazing. Because, okay, let me give you a little preface here. How many people believe, okay, maybe I won't do a raise your hand thing, okay? I wanted to, but maybe I won't, okay? There are a lot of people that believe that God will not take care of you if you're not taking care of yourself, okay? Don't raise your hand, okay? I understand your heart, but you have to understand you're also an American, okay? And I mean that in the most Christian way possible, okay? We're Americans, and so we believe this. Look at what Jesus says right here. This is in Scripture. Look, verse 25 says, this is Jesus talking. He says, therefore, oh, maybe let's add verse 24, because this, this is just a little additive that's so good. Jesus says this in verse 24. He says, no one can serve two masters, for either... They will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, God and money. Then he goes on in verse 25. He says, therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life. What you will wear, or excuse me, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. That's what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barn, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Let me read that again. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? In some versions, it's one hour to his life. Which of you, by worrying, can add one hour to your life? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, tomorrow they burn it. Today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven. Will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? What is he saying to us? Thank you. So good. Yeah. So good. Okay. Don't worry. You know how many times it says do not fear in the Bible? 
365 times. Thank you. One for every day. One for every day. Don't fear. Your God has you. So remember how last week we were talking about how God has the keys to death and to hell. Even though man, it's going to be a little blunt, even though man desires to kill us, ultimately, Adam and Eve, they brought death into this world. All of history, people have been bringing death to other people because of it. But you see, Jesus so lived a life that was perfect in every way, which made him the perfect sacrifice for us. And then when he dies and goes in the grave, proclaiming the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, he then comes back to life holding the keys to death and to hell. And so he says to you, why are you afraid? Isn't that what he just told us? Why are you afraid? You can't, by worrying, add even one hour to your life. You realize that? Your life is in God's hands. It was planned from the beginning, remember? He's been doing this a long time. Long before you were ever here. You think God can't handle your life? He handles everyone's life in the whole world and has for all of the past and will for all of the future. Everyone's. Look, God's got you even in death. Why are we afraid of death? Let me pose this to you guys, because I did the first service, and so you guys don't get to be omitted. Why are you afraid to die? I know you are, so because I, I am in some respects, right? What, tell me why you're afraid to die. What's that? Oh, that's one I haven't heard before, because you're afraid of your sin. Tell me, Tell me what you mean by that. There's a lot of people that don't think that the trivial things are sin. Yeah. And it just gets caught up eventually. Mm -hmm. It takes the man to just say, what happened here, 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 here? Yeah. Right? Right? He's not going to pick on us, I don't think, because he wants to give you those crowns of glory, right? Mm -hmm. But I think he'll recognize the things that you've done that are not in him. Yeah. So you're afraid of the judgment, basically, and how that's all going to look. I can appreciate that. I really can. Who else? Did you have something? Yeah. So recently I had this small heart attack in a week, okay? Mm. And it got me really thinking about my girl, Dakota. So mm. yeah. I was 13 and I got her a year and a half ago and I've had her since she was seven months old. And I can't die, right? But I have a lot of fear. It really got me thinking. I don't think I'm going to die anytime soon. But, you know, it definitely woke me up and I thought, I'm really worried about what will happen with Dakota because I have mm. So like, and who's what the left Lord behind? Told me is that mm -hmm. he would work that out as it happened. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, yeah. there was a lot of fear about you know what's going to happen to my little girl. Yeah. See, that's that's mine. There is like, okay, like I know me, I'm covered. Like the Lord's got me, and when I die, He'll take me to heaven, and I'll be in the best place ever. And praise the Lord, I'll be there. But what about the people I'm going to leave behind? Right. Like, who's going to take care of them? Anybody else feel that way? You could raise your hand for that. Yeah, that was a good one, right? Okay. Let's address these things because I think it's important. Oh, you got some? Okay, go ahead. The regret. Yeah. So for those of you who didn't hear, she's concerned about the things that she's been doing, what she's been living for, and that the Lord wouldn't receive her and that she would have that regret, which kind of goes along with what you were talking about, right? 
that you're not prepared enough to die yet. I can understand that too. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, then there's other people who are afraid, like, how am I going to die? I don't want to be in pain. Yeah. I understand all those things. Because these are very real things. Okay? We're all going to die someday. One out of one dies. And I don't know how we're all going to die, but I could tell you that some of us are going to go through more horrific things than other people are. And the way the world looks like it's going... I'm afraid for the young people, I really am, the ones that are really young, because who knows what all that's going to look like, you know? Uh, we see what it looks like in other countries right now, but someday, be rest assured that America is going to get there too. Yeah. We're getting there, day by day, sliding downhill fast. Look, let me, let me address the one that is mine first because it's as, as near and dear to my heart, right? Um, yeah, I'm afraid to die, not because of me, but because of the people that I'm going to leave behind. Of course, like we just talked about, like the young people who are going to be here when I'm not here anymore. This is a, this is a difficult thing because in my own heart, in my papa's heart, I want to be here to protect my family. I want to be here to provide for my family. I want to be here that they have someone to go to if they need someone. And from my vantage point right now, there would be nobody else, right? If I wasn't here, then there would be nobody else. But part of the reason there would be nobody else is because I'm already occupying that position. There's nobody else that needs to be here because I'm here. But you see, for my family, the Lord provided me. For those of you who don't know the story, um, Marissa is Irene's daughter, but when she was real young, the Lord brought me into their life because her dad has never really been a part of her life. And so we look back at it now as the Lord's sovereign hand over us that he brought me into their life and all this has happened. Well, That is the sovereignty of God. You see, I didn't know when I was getting into all this that it would become all of this. <laughs> I didn't know that. I was just doing what I thought was right. But the Lord had a bigger plan in mind. And that's what I love about him is you don't know how life's going to go. You don't know what situation you're going to be in. Are some of the situations we find ourselves in weird? Of course they are. But you see, God has a plan for those situations, and he has a purpose in it. For me, it was this. For you, it's going to be something else. But, you know, I see from my own story in my life that God's sovereign hand put me in the place he wanted me to be, not just for myself, but for my family and for all you guys, too. That's God's sovereignty. That's not me. That's God. But I tell you that to tell you that if I wasn't here, God would provide somebody else to fill that role for my family and for all you guys. That's who God is. That's what God does. And so for me to have this fear of like, hey, when I die, my family's going to have no one and they're going to be destitute and out on the street. That's just not true. Because we serve a God who's better than that. Amen. We serve a God who's greater than that. And he told us right here in these scriptures that he's going to provide. So why am I afraid? Why am I concerned? What? What? Quit answering my questions. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It is my flesh. It's so true. Because we somehow think that the world revolves around us, and if we weren't here, the world would be a way worse off place. Which is true. I won't take that away from you. 
But understand that God also has the next man up. You ever hear about that in football when somebody gets hurt? Well, it's next man up. That's what the Lord does. He's got someone already prepared for that moment where he's got something different for you and he's got this for them. Look, it, it should be an imperative thing for us in our lives to raise up the next generation. No matter where you're at, from the oldest to the youngest, be considering what God wants to do through you and what God wants to do through the next person. Because our flesh tells us that even in a church, it should be all about us and the whole world should be based around us and God should be doing things for this church that he shouldn't be doing for another church and it should be, God's focus should be all here and nowhere else. Look, God's church is everywhere. God's church is global. It's his kingdom. And so for us and for the church down the street, I pray for both. I pray that God would provide for both. I pray that God would bring the people that he wants to bring to both. I pray that God would support them financially, that they would have everything that they need, and that his spirit would be upon them to speak the truth of his word for all the churches. Because I know that it's what we're doing here is bigger than just this. Yeah, we got a flag in the ground here and we're saying, okay, we're the church here. But there's a few more flags in the ground right here, right? By the grace of God. And so it's the same thing for a church as it is for a family. Like, be raising people up. Do whatever you can to support each other in the Lord that we can all grow in him, that we can all have what we need. This church ain't for everybody, okay? I know my jokes are corny. I like them. I'm sorry, okay? But it's not going to be for somebody else, you know? There's people out there I'm, that ain't for me and I ain't for them. But there's a church down the street that might be. So why would I not want God to support that church that could raise another person up and that could grow them and do a work for God's kingdom. Of course I want that. Of course. My flesh doesn't want that. But my spirit desires that for the church of Jesus Christ. And it's the same thing for my family. My flesh doesn't desire that anybody else would be the head of my family. But I know that if I wasn't here, God would take care of them. God would provide for them. Maybe not even through another person. Maybe he would just do it supernaturally. Like, here you go. Maybe he would do that. So what was the other one? Oh, look at this. We're having show and tell time right here in the middle of service. Yeah. Uh, regret, right? Being afraid. It's legitimate. Um, has anybody in here never done something that they regret? Please raise your hand. Never? I'm talking, I'm, this is opposite day. Have you never done something you regret? Okay. We've all done, okay. Has anybody ever done something they regret? No, there you go. Okay, you're welcome. Look, we've all done things we regret. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Who's it about, though? Is it about you or is it about Jesus? Look, anytime you're looking at yourself, you got to understand you're not going to be good enough. Anytime it's you versus God face to face, you're not good enough. Give me just a second. You're not good enough. Okay? But anytime your focus is on the Lord, even at the great white throne judgment, if your focus is on the Lord, he's good enough. He's good enough for you, and he's good enough for everybody else that will call upon his name there. Do you have something real quick? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Just that it's bigger than what you regret that you have done. Mm-hmm. It's also when you regret taking part in offering. 
Yeah, it's true. And that's Yeah. You know, the hardest thing with regretting what you haven't done is that you don't know how it turned out. So your imagination tells you that it turned out really good. But reality for the things that you did do tells you that it didn't work out so good, right? Yeah. Look, God is great enough for everything that you have done and everything that you haven't done. It's not about you. It's about him. Corey Tim Boom has this great quote that I never can remember. It says something like, if you look at the world, you'll be distressed. If you look at yourself, you'll be depressed. But if you look at Jesus, you'll be at rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord for Corey Tim Boom. So good, right? Because that is the truth of how we feel. If you're looking at yourself, not good. If you're looking out there, even worse. But if you look at Jesus, you have total peace. Have total peace. Receive the gift of total peace from Jesus. He has set you free from all your sins and all your trespasses. You could have no regret. You know how many times I regret things every single day? I regret something I did or something I didn't do. But I trust in the sovereignty of God. And in that moment, I take that captive. And I say, God, this is what you wanted. I've done some stupid things. I do some stupid things every day, and I look at myself, and I'm like, wow, that was dumb. What did you do that for? But I understand that God is sovereign over all those things. He's teaching me something. He's teaching the people around me something. He's doing all those things. And yet he still has me here. I don't deserve to be here. I can think of a handful of times that I shouldn't have still been here. But yet, here I am. Look, the sovereignty of God is greater than all your mistakes. It's greater than anything you could do. He has you in the palm of his hand. That plan that he developed before life began is still working in your life right now. It's still happening right now. He has that plan and purpose happening now for you in your life. You may not be happy with where you're at. I wouldn't be either. Because if you're looking at heaven, man, this place should not make you happy. But look, when your eyes are on him, man, he just has such greater things for you than worrying about things that you messed up. God has given you the freedom from all mess ups. He set you free. From every dumb thing you've ever done. You don't have to be washed clean to be a Christian. You're going to mess up again too. Trust me. But he sets you free from that too. You're not perfect and that's okay. Receive the grace of God. Receive the mercy of God over your life. Death has no hold on you because of what he did. You understand, when you die, even if you die in the most horrific way possible, the moment that you die, all this is over, and you get to be in the greatest place you have never seen in your life. You can't even imagine it. And yet, in a moment, you will be there. In a moment, God will take you out of suffering into this perfect, beautiful, glorious being. That's what he does. Let's read some of these scriptures that I had, because I'm here we are all over the place like I always am. Look at this. Oh, I love this one. Psalm 118, verse 6. You got that one? Yes. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? What can man do to me? You know, he says, Jesus says, do not fear the one who can kill the body, but fear the one who can kill the body and throw the spirit into hellfire. You don't need to fear people. You understand, 
Maybe a person kills you. But that's as far as they could go. After they kill you, what can they do to you? Nothing. After you die, what can this world do to you? Nothing. And yet, Jesus Christ then has you still in the palm of his hand as you've always been and will take you to the place that he's always been preparing for you. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, I would have told you. In my father's house, there are many mansions. And he says, I'll be coming back for you. To receive you unto myself that where I am, there you can be also. And thus, we will forever be with the Lord. What is greater than that? There's nothing. Your destiny is to be with the Lord. No matter what happens to you here, no matter what you go through, you're going to be with the Lord. If you have Jesus in your heart, you trust him as your Lord, you're going to be with him. He made it that simple. She's throwing gang signs at me back there. No, she's my timer. She goes like this. Two minutes. Yeah. I'm not done yet. Yeah, see? Yeah. I, I say things I shouldn't, I know. I bring up too much stuff. Can't help it. Can't help it. Look in uh, John 10, verse 27. He says this, Jesus again says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them. My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Neither shall anyone, go ahead, I'll let you clap. You're clapping for the Lord. Yeah, praise the Lord. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. So that hand that Jesus has had you in from the beginning of time will bring you through all eternity. Is death something that separates you from Jesus? Why? Because he has the keys to death and to hell. To the person who he opens the door for, they don't have to experience that. Spiritual death or hell. They don't have to because he has the keys to them. And the person that has the key can open the door whenever he wants. Jesus will open the door for you. He has something for you that nobody else can do for you. So yeah, you're going to die, most likely. Unless you go in the rapture, right? That's, that's the most likely. Oh yeah, we're all praying for the rapture. You never have to die. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Yep. You know, I guess that's the little reward for it, right? If you have to go through death, you get to go first. That's awesome. Chances are you're going to die. But death doesn't separate you from God. He's the one who conquered death. He's the one who made it so you don't have to experience a spiritual death. And he's the one who made it so some people in the rapture won't have to experience death at all. God bless you who will be going in that. God told me I'm going to die in a car crash, so I won't be going in the rapture. But I'll be going before you guys to heaven, so. I say I'm going to die in a car crash, and the first thing she says, are you alone? <laughs> okay, I see where I stand. I don't know. I'm still waiting on total confirmation, because if God tells you you're going to die, you're like, okay, I need confirmation like 100 times on that. You know what happened? I'll tell you this story. This is fun. We went on a cruise, and there was a few people, where one, one of the groups that went with us was Daphne and Dave and their son, Jeremiah. Huh? 
Are they in the car too? Oh yeah, everyone who was on the cruise was in the car with me. No, I'm just, just kidding. So God had told me, he like hinted to me, hey, you're going to die in a car crash. And I was like, what? Like, that was definitely the devil. That was not God. I'm not dying in a car crash. Well, then Jeremiah, their son, who's like 14 years old, he's just spry enough to say something he hasn't thought about yet. Well, we were doing something totally random. We were like going to eat or something like that. And we were sitting there in the line, in the, I guess in the lobby or whatever, the foyer, waiting to go in to eat. And we were talking about something totally off topic. And I, I think it actually was about death or something like that. And I think we were talking about going in like one of those float planes. And we were talking about like, oh, dying in a float plane. And he just like immediately turned to me and goes, no, you're going to die in a car crash. And then he went right back into the conversation. And I was like, that's rude. You say that to me just like that. Blank, 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 blank face too. Like no emotion. You're going to die in a car crash. And then just went back to talking. And I was like, Yeah, I told you my Ferrari is the one that was going to be burnt to the ground, right? Yeah. Oh, man, I don't know why I told you that. Here's the thing. I knew that was going to come up from Grandma, too, right? She's like, you're not driving anymore. Here's the thing. God is sovereign over my life. Have I stopped driving since then? No. I think I drive even crazier now. I'm like, hey, Do it. if you got to know, I mean, hit something hard. You don't want to limp away from something like that, right? <laughs> like, that wouldn't be fun. Look, God is sovereign. He knows. If, here's the thing. If God told me and God ordained for me to die in a car crash and I never drove again, guess how I would die? You could bet I would be sitting in my front room drinking a cup of coffee, and next thing you know, you just see a car flying through the air <laughs> towards you, and you're like, hmm, this might be it for me. Look, you can't, you can't outwit God. You can't take the sovereignty of God. How many people, how many people live their life so crazy and so wild and you're looking at them like, man, you should be dead. And yet, somehow, some way, they're still alive. You're like, it makes no sense. <laughs> Stop looking at each other. <laughs> and then there's the people that are so afraid to die that they won't even live. They sit in their front room watching the news all day. Wondering when the next nuclear submarine is going to shoot a bomb at their house. And they'll be sitting there drinking a cup of coffee, and they'll have a heart attack and die. Look, God is sovereign over all of us. He knows the plan that he has for us. And when your time is done, your time is done. Paul says in verse 12, I believe it is. He said, for this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. For I know in whom I have believed. I know. What am I afraid of? And then he goes on to say, I know, who, I know in whom I have believed, and I am persuaded he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. He is able to keep you until the day of your death. No matter if you live your life crazy or you sit in your house all day long and do nothing because you're afraid to die. You're not saving yourself. God will come for you. 
at some point. But he says this for those who are in him. When he does come for you, you have something better coming to you. 1 Corinthians 2.9. As it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. You can't even imagine what God has for you. You've never seen it, and you won't see it until he comes for you. Understand God is sovereign over your life. Death will not separate you from him. Hell will not separate you from him. Your sin, your regrets, all those things will not separate you from the love of God. He has you in the palm of his hand, and he says, whomever is in the palm of my hand, no one can snatch them out of there. You're in the hand of God. Allow the sovereignty of God reign over your life. Allow the sovereignty of God to reign over your life. Trust him in your failures, your mistakes, and in your successes. All of those things. Lord, we thank you that we can trust you. We thank you that you're a God that doesn't stand afar off, who never sleeps nor slumbers, who isn't out getting something to eat, but who is always focused on his people, whose eyes are always open, whose ears always hear the cry of his children. Thank you that that's you. And thank you that you've given us a relationship with you. We trust in you for that relationship. We trust in you for our salvation and for the future hope of being with you for all eternity. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I know I answered some questions during that, but if you guys have more, if you want to add a verse or whatever it might be, add to the study. Feel free. Do you know the one that stuck out? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, oh okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. So good. Because that's what God said, right? In dying, you shall surely die. Wow, that's an interesting one. Okay, go ahead. So let's see. Verse. Is it off? Colossians 3. Colossians 3. There you go. says, Whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. Mm hmm. Knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of inheritance, for you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know, I mean, so good. That's all we got to do is to, to lean in and depend and abide. And then the other one I was thinking of was, uh, let's see, 2 Corinthians 12 9. Jesus said, and he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Yeah, you know, so you know, good. Even when you, know you, when you feel like you can't do it, you don't have what it takes, like say not being prepared. You know, I was told, asked if I wanted to get into children's ministry, and I thought it'd be great, but I just wasn't, didn't feel like I had the, I wasn't prepared enough, mm. you know? And I was told, hey, you want to be prepared? Do children's ministry. Yeah. And it did change my perspective on the way I prepare because kids can ask the darndest questions. <laughs> they can't sound like the kids, man. They really make you feel it, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, just be ready with an answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so good. Praise the Lord. Awesome. You got something? Okay, here you go. My first husband told me that I was supposed to die in 2006, March 24th, with wow. my four children. Wow, he gave you the and, day, too? Oh, yeah, he gave me the date, everything. That's rough. And I'm thinking, okay, and I'm supposed to die, and so you don't have to do some stuff. I was, the only thing that I was fearful of is losing my loved ones behind, mm -hmm. like you said, that I wouldn't be a mom, too. But four of my children, because I had five, my oldest one was going to be in Japan. Oh. And so she was going to stay there to be a missionary. Beyond all this point, and when he told me, I was at peace. Wow. And I'm thinking, no man can tell you when you're going to die. Yeah. I had a doctor tell me in 96, 
that I could, <laughs> you can guarantee me five years, years of my life because I was a little bit overweight and I had di- I might get diabetes. Oh. And I go back to the doctor uh, two years later and say, I thought you said I could survive, you know. <laughs> it's true. No man can tell you when you're yeah. going to die. God has the plan for yeah. you're going to die. And you're not going to die in a car accident or something like that. <laughs> if, if you're not yeah, die. it's All true. Right. Yeah. God has a plan. Yeah, yeah, so good. Praise the Lord. It's true. That's so good. So good. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Excuse me. Hmm? There you go. I was just, don't go far. Okay. I was just going to say, there have been, I have seen, heard of people and seen yeah. movies and read some books about guys that died, people that died, one specifically in a car accident, and I can't remember the other, that after having been declared dead and been dead for a couple mm-hmm. hours, they were gone. And they told stories. Wow. About where they went, where they were, and all about mm-hmm. Jesus. Wow, that's so good. So mm-hmm. you may die in an accident. Doesn't mean yeah. you stay dead. That's right. I mean physically. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely gonna happen to me. No doubt. <laughs> it's true. I mean, but that just shows again the sovereignty of God, right? Like, you could be in horrific situations and yet. He's the one who decides when it's over, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Praise the Lord. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, if I revive from that, here, I'll, yeah, I'll be here. You guys are funny. Yeah. Talking about people dying is fun, right? Especially when it's not you. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Has anybody got anything else really quick? Okay. Can you say it loud? Okay. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so what he said is uh, his biggest regrets are going to be when the Lord told him to do something like going to witness to someone and he didn't do it. And I, had, I already have regrets about that right now. But, you know, again, what I tell myself is the Lord didn't have it, you know. He didn't want it. Yeah, he produced in you a regret so that maybe you wouldn't miss out on the opportunity next time. But he didn't have it for you that time. Um, and I've found that when the Lord has worked in me to speak to other people about my faith or to pray for them or whatever, I'm like, man, I just have like a total peace over the whole situation, you know? And it just happens. And I think when you put your trust in him for those things, then he does the work. And so it, again, just becomes not about you. It's about him. So, yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah. So, awesome. Praise the Lord. Well, let's stand. We'll do our last song.